Hello, my name is Marissa. And my name is Tracy. And these are the seven key things you should know about vaping. All right, you have children and children have questions. The purpose of this video is to equip you with the tools to open up conversations with your son or daughter about vaping. This isn't a lecture, this isn't the talk, unless you need it to be. As you know, teens' lives are always changing and so are vaping trends. And we're here to give you some facts so you are informed and feel more confident to start a conversation with your child or even another parent. Let's get started. Number one, the devices. There are many names for this. E-cigarette, vape pen, jewel, puff bar. The landscape is ever changing. Basically, these devices have flavored liquid with nicotine that is heated, vaporized, and inhaled. They all do the same thing, they just have a different shape or form. Vaping devices are easy to hide and look like everyday items such as pens, highlighters, or USB drives. Now that Juul flavors are limited, you have switched to Puff Bars and other brands such as Stig, Blow, or Loom. These devices have a one-time use. They come with sweet and fruity flavors such as passion fruit, strawberry, grape, and cotton candy. One of these devices contains the same amount of nicotine as at least one full pack of cigarettes. Youth could take a hit throughout the day and not realize how much nicotine they are consuming. Bottom line, tobacco companies are very creative and constantly developing and marketing new products to keep youth vaping. All right, number two, vaping is dangerous to your health. We've all heard it, but we might not really know the facts. Most importantly, and maybe most misunderstood, nearly all vape products contain nicotine. Nicotine is highly addictive and it can harm the developing adolescent brain. Because your child's brain is still developing until about age 25, exposure to nicotine can affect learning, memory, and attention. It can lead to behavior problems or even addiction. Remember, no amount of nicotine is safe for your child. Your child might also try to tell you it is just harmless water vapor. The truth is, what is inhaled can have heavy metals like nickel, tin, and lead, formaldehyde, flavorings linked to lung cancer, and other cancer-causing chemicals. There are also small particles that can be inhaled deep into the lungs. Do you want those chemicals in your child's body? Finally, you may have questions about vaping during COVID-19. Health experts state vaping causes damage to vital organs. It may weaken your ability to protect yourself from COVID-19. This may leave anyone who vapes at greater risk of getting COVID-19 and having more complications. Number three, the dangers of vaping marijuana. So, in case you didn't know, you can actually vape THC, which is the active chemical from marijuana. You've called vaping THC, dabbing, and use of a dab pen device. THC comes in concentrates and wax, which is heated into a vapor and inhaled. In this form, it's highly concentrated. In the 2019 Minnesota Student Survey, one in four high school e-cig users reported vaping recreational marijuana. That concerns health professionals and it should worry you. This potent THC is dangerous. It not only impacts concentration and learning, but it has a significant link to psychosis, which can alter the way your brain processes information. Number four, vaping and the connection to mental illness. As a parent or caregiver, you need to be aware that many youth are vaping as a way to cope with an underlying mental health concern, such as feeling anxious or even depressed. It is important to understand vaping, nicotine, or THC only makes mental health struggles worse over time. It can make your child want to vape more often, which may increase the risk of developing an addiction. If you find your child vaping, pay attention for signs of addiction and mental health concerns. Approach your child with care. Talk openly to better understand why they are vaping. If you feel there is a mental health issue, seek professional help your pediatrician or school counselor are good places to start. And you know, I think that's one of the things we have to remember as parents, we're not alone. And there are people and professionals out there who can really help us, help us show our children how to make good decisions. For sure, it takes a village. It takes a village, that's right. Number five, signs your child might be vaping. So we've discussed why vaping is harmful and dangerous. 
But how do you know if your child is actually vaping? Honestly, it can be challenging. It's so easy to hide and the scents from vapes can be downright pleasant. Obviously, watch for vaping devices and products in your child's backpack or room. Here are some other warning signs your child may be vaping. Behavioral changes, mood swings, or agitation. A change in grades, unexcused absence, or frequent tardiness to class. Sweet fragrances on their clothes and on their backpacks. Maybe a recent weight loss. Photos, videos, or ads of vaping on phones. One might even see secretive behaviors like deleting texts or maybe changing passwords. It's certainly not an exact science, but keep your parent antenna up. You'll start seeing signs if it's becoming an addiction. Number six, actions to take if your child is vaping. As a parent or guardian, it's important to understand that the majority of vaping devices include nicotine, and nicotine is a highly addictive substance. Even with you or school uncovering your child vaping, your child might not be able to just stop vaping. The strong addictive nature of nicotine may mean that your child requires support from you, their pediatrician, school counselor, or cessation quitting tools. And that's something to remember, there is an addiction piece to vaping. Yes. So even having a conversation with your child doesn't mean they're necessarily gonna be able to just stop. Exactly, Marissa. Here are some tips to have a good conversation. Be sure it's a good time to talk with your child, have a plan on how you're going to bring it up, be calm and ask open-ended questions to encourage two-way dialogue. Avoid jumping to accusations or shaming. While you may be shocked or even angry, it's best to engage respectfully. If you are too upset to continue, set another time to talk when everyone is more calm. Listen seek a deeper understanding and come together to an agreement on the next best steps and appropriate consequences. Strict punishment or abusive language tends to be less effective and only damages relationships. Keep a positive connection with your child to rebuild trust and provide the needed guidance and support. When it comes to getting your child to stop vaping, it's all about giving them that support, isn't it? Yes, for sure. And now for our last tip, tip seven how to help your child quit vaping. Luckily, there are a lot of resources out there to help. Minnesota has a program to help you quit vaping. It's called My Life, My Quit, and it's available free to Minnesota youth. Search for My Life, My Quit online to explore more. It's important to mention for youth or adults wanting to quit smoking cigarettes, vaping is not an approved or proven way to quit smoking cigarettes. I know this is all a lot to take in, but you've taken the first step to understand more about vaping. Keep learning and empowering yourself to be a great parent or a caregiver. We hope this helps you feel more confident to have conversations with your child about vaping. Make a commitment to talk with your child soon. We also have a companion guide to this video with parent discussion questions and additional resources. Thank you so much for watching. Like everything in parenting, it's not easy, but I hope this helped you take the first step in having a vaping conversation with your child.